A pleasant day, STEM learners. This is Sir Peter, your statistics and probability teacher. For today's discussion, we will talk about hypothesis testing on population proportion. So at the end of this video lesson, you should be able to compute for the test statistic value and draw conclusion about the population proportion based on the test statistic value and the rejection region. So this is where you are going to decide whether you will reject or you will fail to reject the null hypothesis concerning the population proportion. So how do we use hypothesis in symbols? So observe the given table. So our H sub zero is when your P is equal to the hypothesis value of P sub zero. And for the alternative hypothesis, that is P is not equal to P sub zero, and that gives us a two-tailed test. For a one-tailed test, which is right-tailed, we have H sub zero, in which P is less than or equal to P sub zero. But in the alternative hypothesis, which gives the right-tailed distribution, we have P is greater than P sub zero. For the null hypothesis, which is P is greater than or equal to P sub zero, our alternative hypothesis is P is less than P sub zero. So again, that is a left tailed test. Always remember that P is the population proportion. Our P sub zero is the hypothesized value of P, or it is P hat. And we note that the test, the type of test will always depend on the alternative hypothesis. So in problem solving, if the researcher is interested whether it's more than the hypothesized value, then that is a right tail test. When it is interested whether it is less than the hypothesized value of the proportion, then you use the less than symbol. And when the researcher is not interested on both sides, therefore it will be a two-tailed test. And remember that the opposites always have the equal sign, okay? So equality is always present in the null hypothesis, while in the alternative hypothesis, we have the three inequalities, um, not equal to, greater than, and less than symbols respectively. So always refer to the alternative hypothesis. What is the formula for the Z test statistic? So to get the Z value, that is P hat minus P sub zero over the square root of the hypothesized value of P times the hypothesized value of Q over N. And to be able to get Q sub zero, you simply subtract one minus P sub zero. Our P hat always is the sample proportion. P sub zero is the hypothesized value of the population proportion. And to get um, P hat, that is X, which is the desired number of response or outcomes, and small letter N, which is the sample size. So for the critical values, for our left tail test, we have negative 1.65 when alpha is 0 0.05. And we have negative 2.33 when we have a confidence level, which is 99%. For a right tail, simply make it positive. So they are 1.65 and 2.33 respectively. And of course, the most popular are in a two-tailed test. We have the positive negative 1.96, for a 95% confidence level and positive negative 2.58 for a 99% confidence level. For the decision rule for our left tail, it follows that we reject the null hypothesis if the Z computed value is less than the critical value, these critical values. And if it is greater than, then we also reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. But for a two-tailed, it depends on the value of the Z computed 
So if it is negative, then you compare it to the negative Z critical. And if it's positive, you compare it greater than to the positive Z critical. So these are the conditions when we reject the null hypothesis. If this um, inequality statement is false, then we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So what are the steps in traditional hypothesis testing? So let's go back. First, we formulate the null and the alternative hypothesis. And sometimes you have to determine the claim. Number two, we determine the type of test, whether it is left, right, or two-tailed. The significance level is also very important. We have two, which is in which alpha is 0 0.05 and alpha is 0 0.01. And of course, the corresponding critical values in which it will help us to decide whether we will reject or will reject the null hypothesis. Step number three, we compute the test statistics Z using the formula. Step four, we write the decision rule as I have stated a while ago. And number five, we make a decision on the null hypothesis so there are only two types of decision-making. It's either to reject or do not reject the null hypothesis. And number six, we write a conclusion based on the claim. So let's now have illustrative examples. So a male commercial on TV says that 30% of women have osteoporosis. And Jeanette, a nursing student, wants to know if the claim is true. After randomly selecting 150 women, she found out that 65 women have osteoporosis. So we have to test the claim using a 5% significance level. So let's have step number one. So notice that the claim is on the null hypothesis because according to Anjanet, the proportion of women who have osteoporosis is 30%. Or we say that H sub zero is P equals 30%. Or we could make it in decimal as 0.3. And for the alternative hypothesis, since we are not interested about the direction, so the proportion of women who have osteoporosis is not equal to 30%. So our age sub one is P, it's not equal to 30% or 0 0.3. Step number two, we determine the type of test. So that is a two-tailed test. Our significance level is 0 0.05. And of course, the corresponding critical values would be positive negative 1.96. So we have to compare this one to the computed value. So let's proceed now to step number three. We compute for the z-test statistic using the formula. Okay, um, But first, we have to identify the hypothesized value of this proportion, which is 0 0.3. Of course, our q sub 0 is the hypothesized value of its non-favorable outcome. So that is 1 minus 0 0.3. That is 0 0.7. And to get our sample proportion p hat, we divide 65 women divided by the total number of women, which is um, 150, and the proportion is 0 0.43. Now we can use the formula. Z is equal to p hat minus p sub 0 over the square root of p sub 0, q sub 0 over n. Substituting the respective values, we have 0 0.43 minus 0 0.3 divided by the square root of 0.3 times 0.7 divided by our sample size, 150. So using your calculators, okay, the old for old calculators, you should press 0 0.43 minus 0 0.30 with parentheses, um, and then the division symbol, and then square root of 0 0.3, 0 0.7 over 150. But for new scientific calculators, you can directly input this one on your calculators. So the answer is 
47. So remember that the Z computed value is compared to the Z critical. And since this is positive, we use a greater than or equal symbol compared to a positive 1.96. So we will do now the decision rule. So the decision rule for a two-tailed test is we reject the null hypothesis if negative Z is less than negative critical or positive Z computed values greater than positive critical. So otherwise, we do not reject the null hypothesis. So we compare now our Z value is 3.47 and our critical value is positive 1.96. So since 3.47 is greater than 1.96, the correct decision making is to reject the null hypothesis. And of course, our last step is to form the conclusion. So therefore, the report on the milk commercial on TV is not true. So we have disproved the claim okay, of the TV commercial. Therefore, the proportion of women who have osteoporosis is not equal to 30%. Since we rejected the null hypothesis, it means we are accepting the alternative hypothesis. Any question? Let us now proceed to the second problem. So Mang Domeng is running for the position of barangay captain. Since he is a very popular candidate, he thinks that the proportion of votes for him is more than 80%. According to the survey of his secretary, 234 out of 300 residents in the barangay said that they will vote for Mang Doming. Is the claim of Mang Doming true according to the survey using a 0.01 level of significance? So let's start forming the um, step one, which is the null and the alternative hypothesis. So for the null hypothesis, the proportion of vote for Mang Doming is not more than 80%. And the direction or the claim of Mang Doming is that the proportion of vote for Mang Doming is more than 80%. So we will start in writing the alternative hypothesis, which is P is greater than 8%. Well, it will follow that it will be the opposite direction with the equality symbol. So that it's less than or equal to, or it's not more than symbol, or a less than or equal to symbol. Step number two, we now determine the type of test. Obviously it's a right tail test. The significance level alpha is 0 0.01. Our critical value for that one is 2.33. So let's compute now for the Z test statistic. Let's have first the given. P sub zero is 0.8. Q sub zero is the um, opposite, which is 0.2. And to get P hat, these are the respondents from the sample. We have 234 over 300. So that is 0 0.78. Now let's compute for the Z statistic or the Z computed value by using the formula P hat minus P sub zero over the square root of p sub zero, q sub zero over n. Substituting the respective values, so we have 0 0.78 minus 0 0.8 over the square root of 0 0.8 times 0 0.2. So we will divide it by the sample size, 300. I hope you could still follow. So for all calculators, you should press open parentheses, 0 0.78 minus 0 0.80, close parentheses. And then the division symbol, you press the square root symbol, parenthesis, parenthesis, 0 0.8, close parenthesis, parenthesis, 0 0.2, and then close parenthesis over 300, and then close parenthesis. And kindly press the equal sign. So for new calculators, you, you should directly input that one in your calculator. So the answer is negative 0. 78. But since it is a right tail, we will compare it to positive 2.33. So for step four, the decision rule for a right tail is greater than, okay? So we compare now 
since negative 0 0.87 is less than 1.96, I mean, no, this should be 2.33. So this is typographical. 2.33. Anyway, this is still less than. So please disregard this one. So the decision is fail to reject the null hypothesis or we should not reject it. Okay. So for the conclusion, therefore, the proportion of votes for Mangdoming is not more than 80% based on the survey. So that ends our video lesson for weeks four to five. Again, this is Sir Peter, your statistics and probability teacher.